Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, I was expecting President to open the session and also do a formal introduction while we're here. Well, in the absence of that, maybe I would love to uh, proceed with my presentation. Um, Good afternoon once again. Good afternoon, sir. You're welcome afternoon, sir. once again to uh, the session on financial asset management and uh, stage. Uh, without taking too much of your time, I'm Ambassador Dr. Ayadeju Yudoku. I'm the President Chairman of the Council of I am Africa. I am is um, Institute of Information Management. I am a professional institute, and um, I will be anchoring um, this uh, session today. Can we all see this screen? Yes, sir. Uh, very well, sir. Okay. Um, well, there is not going to be any much ground rules. Um, the session is uh, an online session. But, but, but before we delve into the presentation, I want us to mute our mic. We all need to mute our mic so that the background noise and interference there can be, uh, will not distract others. Let's mute our mic. So, like I said, I'm. Um, Ambassador Dr. Ayodeji Wole Iduku, I'm the president of IIM Africa. I'm a You're welcome, sir. A specialist. I've been in the information management and technology industry for over two decades now. And um, in my um, active years in, um, in the sector, I've had the privilege of working in the IT, IM sector in the oil and gas and um, because of, of space and time um, you can find a summary of my profile on my linkedin account so displayed on the screen are my social media accounts if you check the linkedin account you definitely get to see more information about me so um the institute of information management is a professional institute um, that we developed to actually help professionals from different walks of life. Be it in the data, information, records, documents, knowledge, library, archives, and content management. So as a professional institute in Nigeria, where I duly registered with the Corporate Affairs Commission, and we have the accreditation of the Federal Ministry of Education. As we speak, the appeal for our charter status is already at the National Assembly, and it's about going through the very first reading. Um, I am being a professionalist that is actually a professional, uh, an international institute with our head office Colorado, Denver, Colorado, in the United States of America. That is where we have our head office. And um, we are in almost all the continents. You can find out how online. You can check our website. various countries we are in. We're in Australia, we're in Canada, we're in the US, Ghana, South Africa, and so on. So as a professional institute, we offer professional certification programs. And we have two professional 
certifications. We have the general certification and we have the professional certification. The, prof the general certification is designed for all professionals. Any profession okay. in any field, in any discipline. It's our mic. It's the interference is I think I can do that And before they do this deal, I can tell them. Let me mute in order to. Okay. You, when you did this place, sometimes in this place, there are still others that I need to mute. Okay. Okay, so like I was saying, we have. um. We have the general certification and we also have the professional certification. The general certification uh, is not projected on the screen here. It's called the GIMC certification. What is GIMC certification? GIMC is acronym for General Information Management Competence Certification. So what that means is uh, it's a general certification that is designed for professionals regardless of their fields, of their discipline, of their training, of their background, or the sector in which they operate. And the essence of the GIMC certification is to ensure that professionals from all walks of life, you know, they have the basic knowledge when it comes to managing information. It's just like we have in, um, we, we have across board, anytime you're talking about um, computer literacy, I remember in the late 80s, you know, computer literacy became um, something that individuals and organizations were craving, you know, to, 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 to acquire the skills and knowledge about how to manage computer. Uh, till the mid 90s. And now computer literacy is a must. It's like it's a requirement for you as a professional whether you are an engineer, you are an accountant, you are a lawyer, you are a marketer, you are a business development personnel, regardless of your field, computer literacy is key. You have to be computer literate, you have to be able to use computer, you have to be able to use computer to do your, your jobs, you have to be able to do so many things with computer for you to be able to compete effectively, you know, among your uh, peers and for you to be able to even secure employment. Because a lot of organizations will tell you, if you are not computer literate, they are not going to employ you. Gone are those days that you have to, you know, talk to people to become computer literate. But we're now in the days of data and information. We're in the data age now. Data is the main thing now. So as professionals, regardless of your discipline, you have to have basic knowledge about how to manage data and information. Because what runs the economy now is data. Any sector, any field, any organization, any government, any society today is being run via data. And that is why data skill is becoming prominent now. So we, we now talk about the need for you to ensure that you have the skills, the data management skills. That is the only way in which you can actually have competitive advantage over your peers. So the introduction of the GIMC was to help to sensitize the populace, regardless of your discipline, on the need for them to know how to manage data effectively. Because um, you will agree with me that from time to time, you find maybe on social media, online, you find some inappropriate materials online today. It might be on any social media platform. You might be seeing certain confidential documents belonging to government, belonging to individuals. You might even be seeing videos of some personal videos of individuals online, putting people into trouble, you know, causing scandalous kind of a scenario. You know, so many things that can affect organizations. So because of this, the Institute of Information Management decided to come up with a general form of certification so that we can educate people and certify them so that they know how to manage and handle data. So data management, data handling is very, very key, which was why we came up with the GIMC certification. The second type of certification is the professional certification. The professional certification is strictly developed 
for professionals that want to you know build career in data information and knowledge management if you want to build a career in information management then you might be looking at some of our professional certification so the iim africa professional certification is uh has three uh, has four levels the first three levels are the composite levels called the imp levels imp is acronym for information management professional so you have to pass imp one you need to pass imp two you need to pass imp three then you decide on the master certification that you actually want to be involved in so at each level professionals are expected to complete five modules and in our case five module is means you have to complete five subject areas an example of some of the examples could include include data management um, module information management module knowledge management module archives management um, knowledge management um business analysis business process management information technology and so on and so forth there are about 15 modules that you need to complete and at each level you are expected to complete five modules so at the master certification level you have three modules to complete then you have your master certification from iim africa so like i was saying the Institute of Information Management, as an international professional institute, has a number of membership grades. That is talking about our membership. We have seven different membership grades. And for you to join the institute, all you need to do is to simply submit your updated CV to our membership department through the membership email. That is membership at IIM dash africa dot org and um, some of the membership grades we have include student membership which is actually targeted as students that are still undergoing you know the academic programs and they have to be able to demonstrate and also show to portray the fact that they are actually students of you know of a recognized institution then after that, we have, the, we have the graduate membership grade. The graduate membership grade is for freshers that have graduated from either polytechnic or university, but with little job experience or work experience or professional experience. So if you are going to be admitted as a graduate member, it means you must have graduated and you have less than two years of professional practice in whatever field that you find yourself. So the next one is um, associate membership with, with acronym AMIIM. The associate membership means you have graduated and you've had professional experience in your field. So whatever course that you actually study is not a problem. It's not an issue, you know. Even if you studied arts, you can be admitted into IIM. If you study this, if you study any religion kind of uh, program, you can be admitted. As membership into IIM is not restricted to any field. Then we also have the professional membership grade. The professional membership grade is for professionals or students with a minimum of five years of experience. So if you have five years of experience, it will be detected in your CV and you'll be graded as a professional member. Then we also have the senior professional membership grade. The senior membership professional uh, membership grade is for professionals with minimum of 10 years. The same thing goes for fellow. For fellow grade, you need to have 15 years before you can become a fellow of the institute. Then we also have the honorary fellow, which is usually targeted at you know, top CEOs, president, governors, ministers, and eminent personalities in the society. Then we have the corporate membership. The corporate membership is for any organization that is duly registered and, you know, you can 
substantiate that, you know, by proving to the membership department that your company is duly registered. Then when we talk about affiliation and partnership, the Institute of Information Management is proud to present to you a number of our local and international partners. We have partners locally in Nigeria. We have partners across the globe. We have in the US, in the UK, and in other parts of the world. From what you can see on the screen, those are just few out of the several partners that we actually have. Then, um, well, before we delve into the, into the presentation, I want to hear from you. I want to know who you are. I want to know your background. I want to know what you do. So as for me to be able to know how to properly, you know, give um, this presentation to you guys. So let's start from Mr. Olubodi uh, Shola. Mr. Shola Olubodi, let's meet you, please. Hello, we can't hear you. You have to unmute your mic. Good afternoon, sir. Yeah, good afternoon. Yes, we can hear you now. Okay, sir. Uh, my name is Oedrin uh, Oluwashi Mwano. Well, I'm using my uncle's laptop to operate this uh, Zoom lecture. Oh, why? So his name is Olubudu. All right. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. So I'm a graduate of a lot tech accounting student and I'm also working yeah, in one international uh, school, a large international school. But I'm not practicing my county yet. I'm working in a facility department uh, in the school. Okay. So that's all I am for now. Okay, thanks. Nice having you on board. Can we have um, Uluwale Michael? Oluwale, Michael, are you there? Okay, if you're not ready, can we have young, young manager, please? Can you introduce yourself? Let's meet you. Yeah, good day, everybody. Good day, everybody. Good day, we can hear you loud and clear. Okay, my name is Mavia Prince. So I'm working in a, an accounting student, graduate. Okay. I'm working with one um, consulting firm. All right. It's nice having you on board. You're welcome. Okay. Who else okay. is available to introduce to do um is our introduction? Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Yeah, this is Oluwalere Michael. Okay. Yeah, my name is Oluwalere Michael. Uh, Good to meet you at this um, um, Zoom meeting. It's an honor to have you here, sir. The pleasure is mine. And um, I'm, yes, sir. Um, by name, as I've said, I'm Oluwale Remichael. I'm a member of um, a student member of the Institute of ICANN, of Chartered Accountant of Nigeria, which is ICANN. So, um, although I did, uh, I started with the ATS scheme, which is the Accounting Technician Scheme. Okay. And um, I'm actually uh, a member of the professional body, which is a association of accounting technicians. Okay. Although now I'm at the final level of um, of ICANN, which is the Institute okay. of Chartered Accountant. Of okay. Thank you very much. It's area. nice having you on board. Really even to be a chartered accountant, but I believe that very soon. Okay. It's a pleasure. You're welcome. Can we have Emmanuel Lulua Shegun, please? Let's make it brief. Time is not on. Yeah, you're time. welcome, sir. Yeah, good, good to meet you. The pleasure is mine. You're welcome. Sir. Yeah, good afternoon, sir. This is um, Ogunton or Emmanuel Lulua Shegun. Um, I'm a graduate of accounting, accountancy from the Polytechnic and foreign living in Lagos. So for now, um. I'm not working, okay. so just graduated last year, December. So, yeah. congratulations! Uh, I'm just looking for trainings, 
to build up myself and things like that. So that was what right. brought me here. All right. Thanks. Thanks for the introduction. We're glad to have you on board. Any other person before we move into the presentation? Okay, in the absence of uh, further introduction, I want to con uh, continue with the class. So we're actually going to start. Today's, um, today's uh, topic is financial data management. But before we dive into what financial data management is, it is pertinent and of utmost importance for us to know what data is. What is data? I'm not going to bore you by asking you to define data in your own way. Because most of the time, when you ask individuals you know, around to define data, they define data in a way that you know, might not really reflect what data is. So in a nutshell, data is a raw fact. That is, data, data is raw. It means you cannot use it. When we say something is raw, it means that thing needs to be processed before you can actually use it. And that is why they say data is raw, because you cannot rely on a single data you know, for you to make any decision. So an example is form, registration form. I believe we almost have filled a registration form at one time or the other. So when we talk about data, those individual fields on the form that you fill, for example, surname, middle name, surname, address, telephone number, email, profession, and so on and so forth. Those are individual fields. So for example, in this class, if I give out, I, I, assuming I gave out forms to all of you to fill, after filling the form, you all return the form back to me. And one out of the entire attendees, only one person filled only the surname. One out of you all filled only the surname. Do you all think I'll be, the form would be useful? A form that has just surname. The person did not fill a middle name. He did not fill first name. He didn't fill address. He didn't fill telephone number. No email, nothing. The only thing the person filled was just the surname. Do you think that form is going to be useful? Definitely it's not going to be useful because at the end of the day, it's going to be difficult for us to know if the form we're talking about is talking about a particular person. Because filling your surname alone, you know, filling your surname alone does not, you know, pass all the necessary information to the person that is actually collecting the data. So by the time you submit the forms, it means you've submitted data. The data you have submitted in your completed form, bringing it together will now give information about you as a person. So the only person that filled the surname, that particular form is going to be useless because we're not going to be able to make meaning out of it. So anytime you have data that you cannot make meaning out of, it's still at this data stage. It means you cannot use it. So what is now data? We say data is a collection of facts, such as values or measurements. It can be numbers, it can be words, it can be measurements, it can be anything. So just like I, I've been explaining, if you don't have complete data together, then you cannot have information. Do we get that? So in other words, when you process data, it gives you what we call information. So information can now be defined as processed data. I hope we are all following. Any question before we proceed? Okay. So what is now data management? What is data management? Data management is an administrative process that includes acquiring. When we say data management, I've talked about what data is now. Now, how do you manage this data? That is what now brings us to data management. The data that is being collected in the course of your uh, activity or activities, maybe in the course of doing your job in your office, uh, maybe on a project site, you know, at locations, at events, at even a training like this. By the time, you know, you are acquiring 
um, data, you are collecting data, there is need for you to manage those data so that you can actually leverage on the data for decision making. So data management is now the process that involves the administrative process, which includes acquiring it. Acquiring it means capturing of the data. And there are different ways in which you can actually capture data. You can capture data either via survey. You can roll out a survey online on your um, social media and for people to fill and help provide certain um, data to you and information. You know, you can um, call people, you can make phone calls to people for you to acquire your data. You can do so many things. You can even go online to do your research to gather data online. So there are various means by which data can actually be can actually be acquired that it can be captured. Then after collecting those data, it's not just about collecting data and collecting data over and over again. After collecting it, the next thing for you to do is to validate the data. So when we talk about data validation, it means you want to ensure that the data you've actually collected is correct, is complete, is accurate. You know, you want to make sure that the, all the data you have collected are usable before you can now say, oh, you now want to store it. Because it is one thing for you to acquire data. Another thing is for you, you know, to have data that is reliable that you can actually rely on for decision making. So if you want to make decision now, you want data that is valid. It's just like in Nigeria, for example, now, part of the problem we have today and why Nigeria is not growing is the fact that we don't have proper data management in this country. Nigerians are today, we cannot sell our population. Some people will tell you Nigerian population is uh, um, 170 million. Some will say 180 million. Some are even saying we are 200 million now. So you can imagine, it means no proper data management going on right now in Nigeria. Most of the decisions that government has been making over the years, they're only making decisions based on assumption. All of the budget you see every other year, and that is why you and I, we are not feeling the impact of uh, uh, government. Because if you make decision on data that is not complete, or data that is not, you know, that is not reliable, then you are not going to get the right result. You are not going to get the desired result in as much as data remains, you know, um, invalid. So by the time you collect your data, you validate it to make sure that the data is, is complete. You make sure that the data has integrity. The data is comp uh, the data you can vouch for it. Then the next thing is for you to store it. So when we talk about data management, there are so many ways in which you can actually store your data. You can store your data online or offline. Those are the two means by which data can actually be stored. So when you store data offline, you can save it in a flash, on a drive. Um, you can save it in your computer hard drive and so many auxiliary external storage devices. Then the other, the other means by which you can store, which I mentioned is online. We have a lot of you know, cloud computing going on these days. You can subscribe to the cloud and store your data in the cloud. When you talk about cloud computing, we have public and private cloud. So it depends on what you really want to achieve or what you want to do and how conscious you are when it comes to data security. So you store the data and also make sure that wherever you are storing the data is adequately and properly protected. Then the processing requires data to ensure the accessibility. That is, when you acquire data, you validate it, you store it and you protect it. It means that you have to ensure that those data you have stored can be accessed or can, they, are, they are accessible. Wherever you are keeping data, data has to be accessible. Because these are some of the mistakes that individual organization and government do make. When they collect data, they don't uh, you know, take into cognizance where they are storing their data. You might want to store your, uh, some data you've collected and maybe the external drive you, had, you want to save it on already had bad sector or the, the drive is defective. 
the drive is uh, it's, it's no longer too good for you to store information uh, data and information mm -hmm. on. so if you proceed and store your data in such a device so there's no possibility that you are going to be able to get the data I'm when you need it. then we talk about reliability and timelessness of data for its users to make sure that the data you are storing is reliable and it's something that can meet users requirements at any point in time so data management software is the same thing as we are creating and consuming data at unprecedented rates you will all agree with me now that you know the advent of technology you know has made the rate at which we generate data to be very very fast because you have a laptop, you have a system, you have internet now. It's easy for you to download different materials. You can download music, videos, so many things on your laptop or your computer on your server, simply because you have access to them. And that is made possible by technology. So at the same time, you know, we need to have data management policy and program in every organization so that you can guide against the way the way and manner in which people acquire data, the way and manner in which people store data, the way and manner in which data is being assessed, and ultimately how you dispose data. So when we now talk about data management, you talk about tools that you can use to manage data. What are those tools that you can use to manage data? An example of such tool is Sage. Sage is an example of a data management software which you can actually use to manage financial data. I hope we are all following. So now, why is data management important? Security of data is very, very key. And proper data management helps to ensure that vital data is never lost and is protected inside the organization. When we talk about data now, if you, if you, if you are used to collecting data, and maybe in the course of validation and appraisal classification and indexing of those data, you will realize the fact that if you had the appropriate policy in your organization in place, there will be need for you to know those data that are vital. When we say data is vital, from the word vital, vital means important. It means something that, is, that you cannot do without. So when you have vital data, it means if anything happens to any vital data, then you can run into problems. If it is in the case of an organization, the organization can run into problems if they lose their vital data. So an example of vital data could be like maybe, um, let's say payment data now. Maybe your company is running um, a cooperative business. And people come to your organization to come and to come and borrow money. You lend people money. At the end of the day, God forbid, if something happens and you're unable to get the data of all your customers, people that have collected loans from you, if anything happens and all those data disappear from your system, do you know that that company is going to run into problems? Because number one, they are not going to be able to know who and who are still owing them, they will not know, they will not be able to trace, you know, the history of payments in terms of the loans that they have collected and so many other issues like that. So when you have data and you have classified certain data to be vital, then it means you have to provide special storage for them. You have to keep them not where you put every other data because if you lump them together, they can get lost. Then we now talk about data security. Data security is also very, very essential. It's very, very essential when we talk about data management. It protects employees and companies from various data losses, theft, and breaches. So when we talk about data security, a lot of organizations today, they just think the only thing they need is to have computer, internet, network, and everything working. You know, they don't care about providing adequate security for their data. So when we are talking about data security, we talk about physical security of data, which has to do with ensuring that whatever facility that you have in place, where those data are kept, where you have your computers, you have your server, you have all your devices, they are physically protected. 
you have to ensure that you have CCTV camera monitoring the entire place to ensure that those, those items and materials are physically protected. Then we also talk about data security in terms of access to those data, online access. It could be through your, um, through your workstation, it could be on your website, it could be your um, cloud storage, it could be anywhere online. So you have to ensure that your data is properly managed. It is when data is properly managed, that is where data uh, security comes to play. So now we're not talking about financial data management. So I've talked about what data is, why we need to, you know, manage data, the security of data, the protection of data, and so on and so forth. But now we're talking about financial data. So when we say financial data, we're actually talking about the data that you generate in the course of financial activities in your organization. So if you work in the financial department, definitely all of the data you are going to be generating will be financial, they will be financial data. So what it means is that you have to make sure that those financial data that you are generating, you manage them appropriately, you provide proper validation mechanism, you know, to ensure that those data are accurate and they have integrity. You want to make sure that those data are properly stored so that any time you need to make any decision or your management or your organization, you can easily access them. So financial data management refers to the set of tools and processes organizations and companies use to keep track of all their financial information and reporting needs. This usually involves the use of specialized software and algorithms, including analytics, reporting, and data visualization tools. So it is very, very simple. So what we're saying here in essence is that when you're talking about financial data management, you're actually talking about those tools that you can actually deploy as an organization, those tools that you can use, you know, to track all the financial data that you generate in the course of your business. So as an accountant, because most of all of you, if not all of you, you are all um, financial students. You're all accounting students. Your background is fi finance. And all the data you are going to be generating, there is need for you to ensure that you have proper data management system in place to manage them. Why do you need um, tools like this for the management of your financial data? It's simply because you might want to like do a kind of analysis of your data. For example, you might want to ascertain the trend in a particular scenario. Maybe for example, like I use um, um, a microfinance example, for example now. You might want to say, okay, in this our microfinance business, who are those classes of people that have been coming to us in the last one year for loans? Are they entrepreneurs? Or are they working class professionals? Or are, are they even those that are not employed? You might want to analyze the scenario so that you have a better understanding about your customers. One mistake that a lot of organizations and businesses do make is the fact that they, uh, they don't take advantage of data management to be able to assess their operations. Because anything you are doing in life and you don't have recourse to data management, you are just going to be working like a blind person. You are going to be working like a blind organization. So a blind man will not be able to see through the road in which he or she is working. So if you are in control of your data, your data will be able to guide you. Your data will be able to provide you insights. We call it data insight. It will give you insights for you to be able to manage and study a particular trend over a period. So for you to be able to effectively analyze your customers, for example, you need to make sure that all of this process I've explained earlier on, they are in place. So the moment you have proper financial 
data management in place, you're able to analyze and to be able to say, oh, we have more entrepreneurs coming in for loans. So how do we better package our offers? The programs you are offering them, how can we, how can we you know, improve on these processes? What are those programs? What are those incentives that we can bring on board to even attract more and more of them? Then you might even want to, you might even want to evaluate how people are actually being faithful when it comes to paying back their loans. You can, through using a financial management software tools, you can be able to see this trend. And you'll be able to say, oh, we have three classes of individuals that usually come to us for loans. And among these three categories, it is only those working class that pays back their loan as at when due. The only way you can have this kind of information is when you have been capturing proper, uh, if you have been cap capturing your data properly, then you're going to be able to have this sort of insight. So these insights will actually help you to be able to take informed decision. Then also when it comes to reporting, when we talk about reporting, there might be need for you to you know, generate certain reports. It could be about your activities, it could be about, um, it could be about your interaction with customers, it could be about your interaction with government, it could be your interaction with regulatory agencies. They might come to you and tell you, oh, how have you been able to manage your data? Like in Nigeria, um, January last year, we had, for the very first time, we had a regulation called Data um, Privacy Regulation in Nigeria by the National, um, um, uh, National Agency for Information Technology in Nigeria. It's called NITDA. NITDA is N-I-T-D-A. NIDA is um, a government agency under the Ministry of Communication. And generally last year, they came up with the data privacy regulation. So what that means or what it portends is that as an organization, all the data you are collecting about individuals, about your customers, about your employees, about those people you are actually interacting and doing business with, NITDA has been appointing agencies of agencies that are monitoring this. So any organization in Nigeria that has not been managing their data appropriately, they, they might run foul of the law, and as a result, they might get penalized. In fact, they have the penalty, there's a particular penalty for non-conformity that runs into up to, I think, about 500,000 Naira. So your company might have to pay up to that kind of amount if you are not managing data appropriately. So we all can see why data management is very, very key and very, very important. And also, you might want to um, visualize data. You know, when we say visualize data, you know, some of, all of us as accountants, I believe you must have one time or the other tried to use some visualization tools. Either, um, you know, trying to buttress certain points or certain facts about a particular trend using bar charts, pie charts, histogram, and so on and so forth. So if you don't have proper financial data management, it's going to be difficult for you to be able to do this. So financial data management solution like Sage is a tool that you can actually take advantage of, you know, to use for data visualization. So putting all of this in place will really go a long way in helping you as professionals, you know, to be able to prove to any other, some of you that said you're looking for employment opportunities, having some of these skills will really go a long way to make you become more marketable and even com more competitive. Because the thing is, uh, to some of you that have already graduated, you already have your degrees now. But by the time you're applying, you want to get jobs, even as a consultant. You want a station where you package your professional profile in a way that will depict the fact that you are a professional in your field. So the, that first degree that you have now, there are several thousands of people that has the same degree. So what will stand you out? And what will make you, you know, what will stand you out and what will make you to be more competitive is when you ensure that some of these skills, you had them to 
the qualification you already have. So by the time you equip yourself with skills like data management skills, then anytime you are going to apply for a job anywhere, or you're trying to work as a consultant, and the firm that wants to engage your services sees that in your, on your profile. The moment they see that, they know, oh, this person is just, is beyond just a graduate of accountancy or, or accounting or whatever. It's actually going to be an added advantage to you. So I will encourage you, you know, to keep, um, to keep on trying to seek for knowledge. And like I mentioned earlier on, we're in the data age now. Data governs everything, controls everything. You know, when you even talk about artificial intelligence, intelligence, um, uh, machine language, you know, uh, machine learning, and so on and so forth, all of these things require data. So don't be afraid that, oh, if they are going to bring technology into the organization, it's going to reduce your chances of getting jobs, or they might even lay you off. The only thing that will stand you out you know, when you're working with an organization is when you are able to acquire the current skills, when you have the right skill sets and you keep upgrading yourself, that will make you to be more relevant in the organization. And the organization will be able to see your contribution. They'll be able to see how important, how key you are to the operation. So based on that, they, instead of firing you, they will prefer to promote you because they, they could see the value that you're actually bringing to the bottom line. So on that note, uh, because my time is fast spent, I think I have just 45 minutes. I want to open the floor in case we have um, questions from you know, some of us. I hope you've been able to learn one, two things from this very short session. So you can open the mic and begin to ask your questions before we call it a day. Thank you. Very well, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, it's a privilege to meet you and to have this session with you, sir. Uh, for me, as for me on my own side, it has been a very comprehensive lecture. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Any other question? Okay, if there is none, uh, President, are you not going to say anything? Hello, sir. Sir? Go ahead if you have something to say because of our time. Uh, what is the relationship of this um, certification with um, accounting? What is what? The relationship of um, all your certifications as it concerns um, our profession. Okay, if I, I wouldn't know if you've been listening to um, the presentation right from the onset. I mentioned the fact that data is not peculiar to any discipline or any field. Did you, did you hear me when I mentioned that, when I said that? Did you hear when yes, I, I heard you? So yes. data is data is every data management is everybody's responsibility, regardless of your discipline. So the accounting profession is not an exception when it comes to data management. And so if you want to effectively manage your data and you want to learn best practices about how to manage data then it is important for you to be part of a, a part of the institute because part of the opportunities that you get as a member is we ensure that you are abreast of technology when i say you are abreast of technology it means as those technologies are evolving as they are coming into the mainstream you know we expose you to them you know as against your competitors your peers other accountants other accountancy students you have all this knowledge even before they know certain things are happening in the field. So I hope I've been able to answer your question. 
Yes, sir. Any other question? Hello, Mr. President. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. How are you? I'm fine, sir. I'm fine, sir. President on board, sir. Yeah, okay. Sir, I have a question, sir. Can you hear me, sir? Okay. Um, sir, based on your experience in the information management field, what do you recommend for accountants at this current age? The training you recommend for accountants at this current age? Sir, you mute. You're on mute. You're on mute, sir. You have to unmute. I, I thought I mentioned that in the course of my presentation. Data management skills is what I will recommend. Because, um, you know, I mentioned artificial intelligence in the course of my presentation. A lot of jobs, a lot of roles in the next few years are going to be taken over by artificial intelligence. And accounting is, is not an exception. I hope you are all listening to me. A lot of yes, jobs, a lot of roles will be taken over by artificial yes. intelligence. Um, most of us must have been hearing about, or must have heard about a company called IBM. Have you heard uh, the, uh, yes, the company called IBM before? Yes, sir. International Business Machine, IBM. IBM as a technology organization has been around for a very long time. And um, they have an artificial intelligence um, solution called Watson. Watson is the name of the artificial intelligence uh, solution. <coughs> Watson as a solution, you know, can do so many things. For example, in the medical field, you know, Watson can diagnose a patient and recommend medication to that patient. Watson can assess a legal matter and tell you the possibility of you winning a legal case. Watson can be deployed in accounting frame. It does to do a sort of machine learning to learn your process that you are doing physically. And before you know it, the system will, be, will take over from you. Every other thing that you do on a daily basis, it can be automated. It can be transformed digitally. Once they transform it, the system will just be running it. And it might only re require little or none of your uh, interference in that. So if I'm going to advise you now, my advice would be that you need to be more data focused. Because the moment you are data focused, that will ensure that even if they are bringing artificial intelligence solution into the system, they will still need you as human being in the area of data management. They will still need you because there are certain activities that the system might not be able to perform that will still require human intervention. So in that part, you don't have data skills. It's going to be difficult for you to be able to still fit into the system. And that is why you hear about the fact that banks are sacking, they are relieving a lot of people of their employment. They are reducing their workforce. Simply because they are bringing technology in play. A lot of people will say, oh, if you bring technology, there will be lots of jobs. Yes, there will be lots of jobs for those people that are not proactive. You have to be proactive in any field you find yourself today to ensure that you acquire all those skills. So that is what will ensure your relevance and we guarantee, you know, your employment wherever you find yourself. Thank you very much, sir. Thank Hello, you. sir. Any other right, question? Yes, I have some, one other question, sir. Okay, go ahead. Now, um, the focus is going, is on, has been on those searching for jobs, those seeking to become an employee. What about those who are consultants already? How do you think they can make good use of data management? 
it's in conglomeration with their consulting field. It's still the same thing oh. we are talking. It's still the same thing we are talking about here. Because if, in fact, as a consultant, they are supposed to be ahead of the game. A consultant is expected to be at the, uh, you know, you are supposed to be on top of the game. Why am I saying this? It's simply because of the fact that you might, you might be unlucky, you know, to get a client that is even more sophisticated than you as a consultant. So if they invite you in to come and consult and they notice that they've gone way, way ahead of you, they might not hire you. I don't know if I'm making sense. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You're not going to be able to give them something new. Because they, they, are, they are well ahead of you. Because of the fact that they're ahead of you, they will not see you bringing any value to the table. So they are not going to employ your services. So as a consultant, you have to make sure you are abreast of technology at every point in time as it affects your discipline. So that it will even be you that will be going about, you know, introducing and educating your potential customers you know on those technologies and that is where they see you really they, they see your relevance and that is what we want to make them to continue to work with you because if i'm going to hire you for example and i know that there is nothing you are bringing i even have a solution that you don't even know anything about why would i want to pay you money you know to come and buy such service any other question? I hope that answers your question. Yeah, with us, uh, we, re we really appreciate um, everything you've said, sir. And to be candid, I've actually benefited. I've benefited maximally from the um, training. So, sir, uh, my question is based on um, security. You made you made mention on um, data management, and you made mention of financial data management. Now, my question is based on security because it's very, very important. As you've said, so many organizations are interested in making use of the, uh, um, let's say, the data uh, management and all that. But I just want to get it right. As regards security, what can be done? Um, to ensure that the data that the organization has, the financial data is actually secured. We have hackers. Take for instance, we have hackers and the, 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 let me just say, the higher the, 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 the value of the data, the higher the, 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 uh, the loss will be. Take for instance, we, have, we even have ransomwares. We have ransomwares in the sense that they will be demanding a particular amount for you to recover your data. But so I just want to let us um, actually realize that what can we actually do to ensure that our data is um, actually secured, is actually secured? Well, thank you very much. You've asked a very, very good and important question. You see, um, for you to have um, data that is well and properly secured in any organization, there is something that you need to have in place, which is policy. As an organization, you need to have data management policy. So your data management policy, the policy will help to define the various data sets that you generate in your organization, the various classification schemes for those data, and how data should be stored how data should be stored, how it should be accessed, how to share data and how not to share data, and how to dispose data. So the primary tool that you need to get that done is policy. So it's even inside that same policy that we help your company to define the various security mechanism that needs to be put in place. So if you don't have data security policy, under your data management policy, then it becomes a problem because your employees or those employees in the organization will be doing different things to protect their data. And as an organization, an organization should have policy that will go across board. That is, um, in department A, finance department has to follow the same procedure as to, um, let's say, HR. 
HR has to follow the same procedure. Our maintenance department has to follow the same procedure. Marketing department has to follow the same security procedure to protect whatever data that they generate in the course of their business activities. So that is it. You talk about ransomware. You talk about ransomware. Ransomware is, yeah. is part of the is part of the risk and the threats that organizations are uh, organizations are exposed to. In as much as you're online, you are exposed to information risk. We call it information risk. And in the course of um, at the beginning of this presentation, I mentioned the fact that we we created um, a certification program called GIMC certification, General Information Management Competence Certification. It was a one-day certification program, and it's very very cheap. That certification program part of the module has to do with data and information security. And if you look through the module, you will see all the processes that every organization needs to follow in order to ensure that their data and information is properly secured. Because if you don't have data, um, uh, data, management, uh, data management policy in place, then it's going to be difficult for you to know how to secure your data. So I hope, you, you, I hope that is making sense to you. Then, um, yes, sir. apart from ransomware, there are lots of other risks and threats that organizations are exposed to. You can have, um, apart from ransomware, your, um, your system could be attacked by any, there are different types of viruses online that if you're not careful, there are malwares, you have malwares, you have viruses, you have different kinds of malicious, you know, Trojans online that you, you, you can actually contract online if you don't have all these policies. So those policies will help to guide the organization so that employees will know their roles and responsibilities. And also if there is need for your organization to employ the use of um, uh, solu software solution, security solution to protect your data, it will be captured in the policy. And your organization will ensure that those solutions are implemented, they are installed to protect your system and also ensure that at the appropriate time, those solutions are updated. You understand? Because it is one thing for you to have yes, the system protected using an antivirus. After a period, you might need to get an update of that, virus, uh, of that antivirus in order for you to remain protected. Because if you have antivirus that is protecting your system from malware, from um, hackers that's protecting it, from ransomware and every other thing. Over time, if you don't update it, you are still exposed to the same risk. And that is why from time to time, all those solution providers, they always roll out updates so that organizations can always try to update their software to remain safe. Because all these hackers you are even talking about, they are not sleeping. The moment you are preventing them from getting into your system, they to their devising means to beat that system. They are devising means to be to beat your firewall. When I say, oh, we have firewall, blah, 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 they cannot attack us. Over, over a, a period of time, if you don't update those solutions, the hackers and all these threats that are coming online will have, you know, a field day to, be, to do whatever you yeah. have on in that access into your system. So you don't want that to happen. So policy is number one tool that every organization needs to have. Um, data management policy. So the data management policy as part of the component, you have the data security uh, aspect of it that we address all of your data security issues. Okay, thank you very much, sir. You're welcome. Hello, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Um, sir, I have a question. Okay, go ahead. Now, as financial accountants that these on financial data through the internet on the cloud, how do we know that a site is accurately secured 
for us to fill in data there for financial transactions. Just like when you are trying to pay for a particular program on net. How do we know that this particular site is actually secured? So we will not go into financial fraud. Okay. Or stuff uh, like that. What I would say is the fact that, you know, anytime you're having any online transaction or interaction or collaboration or activity, any activity online, you always have um, a service provider. So whatever platform that you're using, it is expected that the service provider will protect you. For example, you mentioned online transaction now. Maybe you want to use your debit card to pay online. It is expected that the company or the service provider that is providing you the platform where you want to put your card details, you know, provides appropriate security, you know, on that transaction. And um, how many of us have noticed that there are some websites, if you try to access those websites, if you look at the, the website address, the URL, www.http, www.somethingsomething.com or .org or whatever, always look out for the, those ones. Before you can you do any transaction online with your uh, credit card detail or debit card details, you always need to look out for those URL that has HTTPS, S at the back. It means it is locked, protected. Then you always find a lock, a padlock, a padlock icon beside it. It means that particular site is secured. It's called secure site. So if a, if a, if a website is not secured and they ask you to put your credit card or debit card details, don't do that. Because what it means is that they are exposing you to hackers, they are exposing you to online, you know, threat, uh, online attack. And your data can actually be harnessed by hackers or, or those, you know, illicit activities going on on the internet. You don't want to expose your card details online. So those are the ways you can actually protect yourself as individuals. Anytime you want to pay online, try to look at the address if you have HTTPS and a padlock there, it means that site is secured. Then you can use your card. If it is just HTTP and they're asking for your card, I'm sorry, it might not be secure for you to continue with such transaction. Okay, sir. So apart from malware, um, uh, ransomware, you know ransomware is just like a software whenever your system has been hacked, your data has been hacked, the hackers ask you for a ransom so that, that particular data can be released. Sure. Now, apart from the ransomware, what do you recommend to a particular organization whose data has already been hacked? The IT personnel are not aware concerning data management. Now, the data has already been hacked. And this, this does not pertain to anything concerning ransom. It has already been hacked. They now have access to the company's information. As a management professional, what do you think? What advice can you give to the IT personnel or the manager in charge? Well, let, let me tell you something. Eh? That's how, what it does primarily is um, they will encrypt your data. The data in your system will be encrypted. So they will ask you to pay certain amounts, even using uh, Bitcoin or whatever, so that they can give you the key that will enable you to decrypt what they have encrypted. But most times it doesn't work. Even after you pay, and they give you any key, you might not you might not be able to get all your data completely. So the my advice is, every organization you don't have to wait, you know, to experience situations like this before being proactive or before taking the right steps. You need to make sure that you know you put in place the right mechanism that will ensure that your organization is protected. And that was why I talked about the policy. That policy is very, very key. And also one component out of the policy now that we address the question that you just asked me now. It's called disaster recovery plan. So under your data management policy, you need to have disaster recovery plan in place. Do you understand? 
Um, this um, ransom way of eating has actually happened to us, to our Lagos branch before. It has actually happened, you know, but simply because we had a, a disaster economic plan in place. You know, we were able to revert back to our present, our past situation without losing data. Do you get my point? Because the truth of the matter is, if your organization waits till your system is being attacked, at the end of the day, no matter what, you might not be able to get all the data back again. It becomes a problem. But if you have a policy in your organization and you have a disaster recovery program, the disaster recovery program will help your organization to always be at alert. So whether there is fire that consumes the whole organization, everything got, gets, um, got burnt. Whether it's flood, water came in and spoiled all the machine. Whether it's even theft, theft physical theft. Somebody, maybe somebody, lived, or somebody stole your server or your laptop or your computer or whatever. With the disaster recovery program in place, the moment you buy a new computer, the moment you restore all the physical computer back, then with your disaster recovery program in place, all your data will be recalled as it were before. And even a simple example is the telephone that we use, all these phones that we use. A number of people still don't make use of all these cloud facility, like, like Google Drive, you know? If your phone, if your phone, God forbid, assuming your phone gets stolen today, are you sure, can you, can you beat your chest and say, I can get all my data back. I can get all my contacts and everything intact. Can you beat your chest? So start from yourself and start asking yourself that question. Can you recover after you get a new phone? Maybe your phone is stolen or it fell inside a well or it got spoiled. Can you beat your chest and say, okay, I now have a new phone, I can get everything back now. You're supposed to, because some of these things you are even talking about, they are free. But because people don't know about them, they are free, you are not spending a couple. You see the same online access that you have, that you are using for this presentation, that you are going to apply. And it will help you to back everything up. So the device is just a container for you. That phone you are carrying is just a container. And that is why we're saying now that data is important in every human endeavor. Data is king now. So if you have data, you are the king. It is the person with the data that is the king. So it means if they see your laptop or your phone gets stolen, you can still get all your data back in one piece. So I hope I've been able to answer your question. Yes, sir. Any further questions from the group, please? Any further questions? Do you, do you guys have any, any online group? Like maybe Facebook group or LinkedIn or any platform where you can share some of this information with your friends and colleagues and the rest? Exactly, sir. We have a page, Facebook page. We have a WhatsApp group. We have a Telegram group. Okay, great, great. All right. So that will be all for now. All right. Thank you very much. It'll be nice. Yes, I want to really Yes, I want to really appreciate you, sir, for the time, for everything that you have done. The community of the account. Thank you so much, sir. I want to say thank you. I want to say thank you. Thank you very much. So we hope to have you on board on several occasions like this when we host our meetings again. No problem. The pleasure is mine. Okay, sir. Thank Pleasure you very much, sir. Time. Thank you Have very much, sir. My regards. All right. My regards to the institute, sir. Thank you. We look forward to having you back as an active member. No problem, sir. <laughs> There's no problem, sir. There's no problem. Sir. I will get. I will. I will speak to the group members. I will talk to them. Maybe we can create a section for them when you can. Maybe a live meeting okay. where you can talk about the certification programs and the needs for it because other members are not here in the meeting. So the only thing they can see now is the video that will be sent to them. Most times they need to be convinced and spoken to so they can know yes the validity of the data management program. All right. From the Institute of Information Management. Okay. Thank you very much, sir, for your commitment. Thank you.